Good morning. Uh, so the next 15 minutes I'll be talking about uh, inclusion and trying to answer some questions uh, that we've had uh, that this work was done in collaboration uh, with the Medical Examiner's Office of, Alle Office of Allegheny County. So DNA mixture data, uh, this is unlike the other talks you've heard, uh, is that we use all the quantitative data. Uh, we consider the peak heights, and here, for example, uh, is a mixture. And along the x-axis, uh, we see what the allele is, uh, increasing size. The y-axis gives an indication of allele quantity. Uh, so the peaks on the left have about a third of the quantity of the peaks on the right. The data are trying to tell us what the genotypes of the contributors are. And uh, but from the data, we only can know answers up to probability if there's some uncertainty. So in principle, what one can do is, is to ask, well, for any possible allele pair, what would the probability be? And computers can do that. They can thoroughly go through and try out every allele pair, whether or not it's supported in the data. And say, moving those green bars all over the place where data is, where data isn't, different heights, different amounts, and so on, and considering other parameters. And when it's done, on the, as you see on the right, you end up with a probability distribution of allele pairs at this locus for, say, the minor contributor. And the probability tends to be concentrated where you see by the blue arrow, 90%, 15, 16, a 90% probability in this case of where the data is trying to tell us the, uh, the genotype is. Uh, from genotype probabilities, we can go immediately to identification information. Uh, the likelihood ratio is a measure of identification information, and the factor, the number of zeros of the logarithm in that statistic um, is the standard additive measure of information in science. Uh, the likelihood ratio explains all the data under two competing hypotheses. As we just saw, the matching genotype probability for the evidence was about 90%. Say a coincidental random person for that allele pair was 9%. The ratio as you see on the right, of 90% to 9% is 10. There's one zero in the number 10. It's 10 to the 1. And so the log of the uh, likelihood ratio is one ban, one um, order of magnitude. So ban is the measure of the number of zeros. A six ban is, a, is a 10 to the 6th or a million. Um, negative 6 is 10 to the negative 6 or 1 over a million. So we have a measure of information. And when we look at information over a large set of data, uh, this is taken from a validation study that's appearing in November in Journal Forensic Sciences with the New York State Lab on over 80 uh, mixture items. You see a broad range of information, which is what you'd expect on the x-axis starting from one band all the way out to 22 band, so one followed by 22 zeros. There's the full range of information of evidence from nothing to single source with an average, say, of uh, 13 zeros or let's say 10 trillion. That's what we expect to see from identification in mixtures. Now there are other methods of, for human review that use thresholds, uh, CPI, uh, probability of inclusion, and uh, other methods that use thresholds uh, that don't preserve all the information and don't use all the quantitative data. With threshold methods, you can have one or two or three thresholds. Uh, peaks above the threshold are labeled as allele events, and they're treated as all or none without much use of quantitative information. And below the threshold, they disappear. The problem for this, suppose in this example, all four peaks are over threshold. Well, those middle two peaks, 16 and 17, are a very unlikely combination given the peak heights. You wouldn't get something very low and very high and as, the, as having much probability. Uh, however, these methods would treat, like CPI, would treat them equally, diffusing probability away from a more correct answer by the blue arrow, uh, 1516, and towards answers like uh, 1617 by the red arrow. That reduction in probability results in information loss because the likelihood ratio is, is the ratio of that genotype probability at the match comparison allele pair divided by coincidence. And it's now reduced from 90% to 9%. And the ratio is 1. Well, 10 to the 0 is 1, so it has no information. It's 0 band. And so because CPI explains less of the data, uh, you end up losing information, which can be an issue. 
So what we saw in this study, it's on our website. In fact, this talk is on our website as well now if you want to look at the slides on your iPad as you go through, um, is a concentration now of, in red, of the CPI match statistic on the tw 12 cases that were looked at here where there was a human score with CPI to about half the information from 13 zeros, 13 band, down to six and a half, about half a band per locus. So it's not just that it's less information, but it's also concentrated. The standard deviation is reduced four or five-fold from all information possibilities to just um, four, four, you know, five, six, or seven zeros. So why is this? What, and this is, drove the study. Why are we not just getting a reduction in information, but we're always getting a million? Why does CPI always give us a million or 10 million with 13 loci? Uh, so in this study, we looked at 16 adjudicated cases for which there were reports from the Allegheny County Lab, two and three person mixtures. There are 31 evidence items and uh, 41 genotype matches. You can have more than one genotype match from an item, particularly with methods that pull out the genotypes by computer. The crimes were representative, um, homicides, rapes, and so on. And the uh, items were also representative, clothing, clothing, weapons, vehicles, and so on. So that's our starting point of these cases on which there's a reported human CPI score for calculated in pop stats, and then a computer comparison. And what we're going to do is compare match information from the computer relative to the human review CPI summary statistic that was reported. For the 41 uh, genotypes across 15 loci, we had 615 locus experiments. Human review was done on 517 of those. That's most of what I'll be talking about is the comparison. At the very end, I'll briefly mention when human review wasn't done, distinguishment, distinguishing between uh, when there was dropout or severe peak imbalance or not. So this is what the computer found. Uh, this is a scale on the x-axis ranging for negative and positive information in band units, log to likelihood ratio. Uh, you see a bell-like curve uh, with an uh, average log of about three quarters. That uh, corresponds to a LR of around five. Um, and this is per locus. You see that it's a bell-shaped curve that goes negative and positive. It goes to the left of zero. It goes to the right of zero. This is the normal sort of data you see in science, right? There's a bell-like curve, positive, negative value means it's evidence against the identification hypothesis. What did we see with CPI? Well, what we saw instead is if you look at the red bars, is there's a shift of this curve to the left, stopping at zero. Uh, it looks like there's an average, it's shown in red, of about a 0.489 or about half a uh, band, half a log unit, which is consistent with what we've seen of uh, LRs of five and then add, adding up this information. But a more subtle uh, investigation by fitting this shows that what you're really seeing is the right half of a bell curve. If you think of that as only the right half of the bell curve and the left half has been removed, it has a mean of zero, it has the same distribution to the right as the, uh, as, as the computer's information curve. There's nothing to the left because CPI and most manual methods don't report negative information against the identification hypothesis. So it starts at zero and moves over. But intriguingly, this led to another question that we puzzled over for many months, maybe a year, asking why is it that we're looking at a bell curve centered at zero information with some random stuff off to the right? Was CPI a random number generator with no information? We didn't know. So we thought about this a lot, and in the end, instead of looking at these marginal distributions, that's just only the computer or only human, we looked at a joint distribution that helped us answer this question. So let me first describe what, before I put the scatter plot on, what this scatter plot means. On the x-axis, we have the computer's log, L, log LR information. That is, the computer spend 50 or 100,000 cycles trying out every possibility um, and giving a very thorough examination of what all the probabilities were, and that's what we're using as our gold standard for information. It ranges from negative 2, which is 1 over 100, through 0, which is an LR of 1, 
out to 3, which is 1,000, 10 to the third. On the y-axis, that's the log of the CPI statistic. If you notice, it, start, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, which is 1, 10, 100, 1,000. It can't go negative because it doesn't know how to do that. If you look at the uh, orange 45-degree angle line called same information, that's what would happen if the human statistic gave the identical result to the computer's information. Right? In an ideal world, all the points would line up along that orange line. Underneath there, in green, is more conservative, where human review would give a lower statistic. That's what you sort of expect to see. Above the line, in the pink region, where it says overstated, would be, well, there is computer information. The log LR is greater than zero, but human review is giving a higher number. And to the left, where the computer gives a negative information, that hypothesis goes the other way, that's sort of a little bit imaginative that, well, yeah, it may be very unlikely looking at peak heights and many other parameters, uh, but uh, it's give, human review is giving a statistic there where, in fact, there isn't information. Okay, so this is the scatter plot that we observed on these 517 points. Um, the first question is, are all of these points, so each point is showing on the x-axis the computer information score and on the y-axis the human review score from CPI. And the first question is, are all these points lining up on the orange line of 45 degrees? Doesn't look like it. And so when you compute a correlation coefficient in the top left corner, you see R is 0.376, which in social science would be wonderful. Uh, but in hard science, that would be considered to be a pretty low or minimal if it's even existent correlation. So we're not seeing much correlation between information and the reported statistic. The R squared is a measure of accounted variation. And we're seeing that over 85% of the of explanatory power of CPI is not residing in identification information. It's interesting. Um, what you're seeing in the bottom right is the statistics conservative about three quarters of the time. But if you look above that 45 degree line, over 25% of the time, it's not conservative at all. It's overcalling. And 10% of the time, it's actually going against uh, the information that's present in the data. Uh, we also looked at uh, computer-only results. Uh, and so on the right, these are results the computer called that a person didn't, but these were free of dropout or severe peak imbalance. And we have pretty much the same distribution as we had before for the computer. Uh, when there is severe dropout or peak imbalance, we, uh, in red, we see a distribution shifted to the left with numbers typically between negative uh, 2 and 0. And this is showing that the computer says there's not much support in the data here, and it's going the other way on that particular locus, having evaluated all the data. So in conclusion, uh, we looked at a study where we looked at the CPI locus statistic relative to our best estimate of true information, which is a day of Bayesian calculation on the computer. We see that CPI does not correlate well with identification information. And in fact, it seems to act very much like a random number generator that gives wonderful positive numbers uh, if that's the answer you want. It's not wonderful if that's not the answer you want. Um, more loci will, of course, give a higher statistic, but it doesn't look like it's giving much more identification information. Um, a quarter of the time, CPI seems to overstate the actual information. Uh, and we did see a slightly lower error if you're restricting to only the major of a two-person mixture, but it's still 15% error. So perhaps if the goal is accurate identification information, it might be time to move on to probabilistic methods, genotyping, and likelihood ratios. Uh, thank you. There's a lot more information, um, courses, papers, presentations, this talk, and so on, on our website.